In this example, we're going to take a look at a particular type of particle interaction and we're going to graphically represent this interaction using the Feynman diagram. So let's consider the following particle interaction in which a neutron interacts with our mu1 neutrino and decays into the proton and also produces the mu1. So basically we want to draw the Feynman diagram for this particular particle interaction. So let's begin by trying to understand what is taking place on the subnuclear level. So on one side we have a neutron, on the other side we have a proton. How exactly does our neutron become a proton? The neutron has no charge, the proton has a positive one charge. So let's recall what the composition is of our neutron and what the composition is of our proton. So the neutron is basically a baryon that consists of three quarks. We have the up quark, we have the down quark, and the down quark. Now, what about the proton? The proton is also a baryon, which means it consists of three quarks, but the composition of the proton is slightly different. We still have our up, we have our down, but this one basically transforms into a down. So when we go from a neutron to a proton, the middle down quark for our neutron transforms into an up quark. So we go from a down to an up quark. The question is, what exactly is the difference between an up quark and a down quark? Well, if we examine the amount of electric charge on the down quark, we see that the down quark contains negative one-third charge, while the up quark, up quark consists of positive two-thirds. So we see that when our quark transforms from a down to an up quark, it goes from a negative one-third charge to a positive two-thirds. So that basically means that when our neutron converts to a proton in the process, it has to release some type of gauge boson that contains a negative one charge. Why? Well, because when we take negative one third and we subtract positive two thirds, that gives us negative one. In other words, to actually balance the charges on the two sides, we have to release a certain particle that contains a charge given by this. This is done so that the electric charge is readily conserved in this interaction. The question is, what type of gauge boson is released? Well, we have five different types of gauge bosons. Right, we have our uh, gluon, we have the photon, which both carry the strong nuclear force and our electromagnetic force respectively, and we also have the three types of uh, gauge bosons that carry the weak nuclear force. And these are the W negative, the W positive, and the Z neutral. Now because we want the gauge boson that carries the weak nuclear force, because this decay takes place via the weak nu nuclear force, we also want one of these that carries a negative charge because we know from this it must carry a negative one charge. So that means the gauge boson that is released, the carrier of the weak nuclear force that carries also that charge is given by this. So, let's begin drawing our Feynman diagram. So, the Feynman diagram consists of the y-axis and the x-axis. The y-axis basically designates the time. So, let's draw the y-axis and let's label that as time. We also have the x-axis and the x-axis represents the position in terms of our two particles interacting with one another. So, this x-axis represents our position in space. So now let's begin with our Feynman diagram. 
So basically we have on one side our neutron interacting with our muon neutrino. So they are approaching one another from two sides. So let's suppose on this side we have the muon neutrino approaching. So let's designate that with a single line. As shown, the reason we designate it with a single line is because our muon neutrino is a fundamental particle. It is said to have no internal structure. However, the neutron is a baryon. It consists of three fundamental particles, the three quarks. So that means to represent our propagating or moving neutron, we have to use three arrows. So each arrow basically represents each one of our quarks. So these are our three quarks and they basically represent. So each one, let's say the first one is the up quark, the down quark, and the down quark, and this is our neutron. Now when they basically get close enough, what happens is this neutron releases this gluon in the process, one of the down quarks is transformed into the up quark. And when that takes place, a proton is formed. So let's draw our proton. Proton. So when they get close enough, the boson is released, and when the boson is released, we form our proton as shown. So this is our proton, it contains the up. Now this second down has converted to up, and the last one also remains at down. So the next step is to represent our release of our gauge boson, this W negative boson particle. Let's designate that using this purple. So we have our gauge boson that is released. It travels over a very short distance before basically transforming into our muon. So when this collides and is absorbed by our interacting uh, muon electron muon neutrino we see that we produce our muon and let's designate our muon with a single arrow because the muon is in fact a single fundamental particle that is said to have no internal structure so this is our muon with a negative and this is our muon neutrino so, this is our Feynman diagram for this particular interaction where on this side this corresponds to our neutron and this basically corresponds to our proton. So once again, let's go over what we just drew. So what exactly is the meaning of this particular Feynman diagram? So we have our two interacting particles that are found on the left side. As they approach one another, eventually they get close enough and they interact with one another via weak nuclear forces. And the weak nuclear force is carried by one of three types of gauge bosons. Now because our our neutron needs to transform into the proton, one of the down quarks must transform into the up quark. In the process, we must release a, a quantity of negative charge that is given by negative one. And the only one of these weak nuclear force carriers that has a negative one charge is this gauge boson. So as they approach one another, our gauge boson given by negative one, so let's say this is our gauge boson with negative one is released. It travels as it, as it is released. This recoils and it's transformed and travels in this direction. And this gauge boson eventually collides and is absorbed by this particular particle and we form this muon. So this is the Feynman diagram that describes this particular particle interaction.